After years of battling hybrids with their terrific lineup of TDI vehicles, Volkswagen has finally given in to peer pressure and created a hybrid of their own. So to see if the 2013 Jetta Hybrid is any good, we're comparing it against the grand master of hybrids, the Toyota Prius. Can Volkswagen beat Toyota at their own game? Or should Volkswagen really just stick to making diesels? On the outside, the Jetta Hybrid doesn't differ too much from a regular Jetta. There are blue logos, four hybrid badges, unique 17-inch wheels, a new front grille, extended side sills, and a trunk lid spoiler. Now these all combine to make the Jetta Hybrid more aerodynamic. We have the top of the line model, which features LED running lights, HID headlights, and LED taillights. Some folks hate the way the Prius looks and others like it simply because it conveys a sense of environmental responsibility. Either way, I think it looks progressive, what the cars of the future will look like. And I don't care if your artistic tastes are classical or modern, everyone should be able to agree that by comparison, the Jetta looks like they took a block of design clay and shaped it using a Play-Doh car mold. If there are any downsides on our particular test model, it's an entry-level car and it comes with some pretty dorky looking 15-inch wheels. The Jetta Hybrid is powered by an electric motor that is paired to a 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. The gas engine produces 150 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque, while the electric motor can generate 27 horsepower and 114 pound feet of torque. Combined, the maximum output is a decent 170 horsepower. A first for a hybrid vehicle, the Jetta uses a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Fuel efficiency is officially rated at 42 miles per gallon city and 48 miles per gallon highway, or 45 miles per gallon combined. Pricing for the Jetta Hybrid begins at $24,995, while our fully loaded SEL Premium came in at $31,975. After four years on the road, the Prius's powertrain is more than familiar, with a 1.8 liter gasoline engine making 98 horsepower and 105 foot-pounds of torque. That's paired with an electric motor that makes 80 horsepower and 153 foot-pounds of torque for a total system output of a pretty modest 134 horsepower. Fuel economy matches the Jetta Hybrid on the highway at 48 miles per gallon, while in the city does significantly better with 51 miles per gallon for a combined 50 miles per gallon. Pricing starts at $24,200 for entry-level models, which is what we have here. Like the outside, the inside of the hybrid looks like any other Jetta you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between this model and the TDI. Now to avoid confusion, Volkswagen has added a hybrid badge to the dashboard and replaced the tachometer with a power meter. Now the power meter goes from zero to 10, with zero to six being the efficiency range and six to 10 being the power range. Anything below zero is the charge area, which happens during coasting and braking. In the middle, there's an E-mode, which will keep the Jetta in pure electric power as long as possible. This allows you to be a little more aggressive with the throttle and will allow battery only operation up to 44 miles per hour compared to the regular 37 miles per hour. Being that this is the top of the line Jetta Hybrid, it is very premium inside. We have leather seats, power driver seats, soft touch everything, and of course the great Fender audio system. The interior of this car is what the Jetta Hybrid wishes it had, is what I would say if I were insane. Now, some of the stuff in here I do actually like, like the sloped center stack. There's also the 6.1 inch display audio screen, which is very intuitive. As for what I don't like, well, again, like all Prius models, they've moved everything into the middle of the dash. So all the information you wanna see is found right up there. As a result, what's left in front of you, well, nothing but a big swath of cheap plastic. Now, the same can be said for the steering wheel, it's pretty low grade materials and the seats as well. Standard features include that display audio system, as well as Bluetooth and keyless access with a push button start, as well as Toyota's touch tracer steering wheel controls. And while I don't particularly like the display screens mounted up at the top of the dash, they look pretty low grade and out of date. At least they're simple and easy to use, which is more than I can say for the system that's in the Jetta. 
In terms of overall usability, it does have 36 inches of rear seat legroom, although that's two inches less than what you'll find in the Jetta Hybrid. What it does offer, however, is almost double the cargo capacity with 22 cubic feet. Think of the Hybrid as a dulled down Jetta. Steering feel and response, handling, and power are all down compared to most Jetta models. However, it is still way more engaging than the Toyota Prius. This feels like an actual car, whereas the Prius just feels like a hybrid trying to impersonate a car. The downside is the Jetta is a compact sedan, and most of the trunk space has been eaten up by the batteries and is now under 12 cubic feet. The Prius, on the other hand, is a hatchback and doesn't suffer from this fate. Just imagine how cool a Jetta sport wagon hybrid would be. It's true the Jetta Hybrid isn't that fun to drive, but you can have a different kind of fun. Put it in E-Mode, be light on the throttle, and see how far you can go on battery-only power. So is the Prius as dull to drive as its reputation would have you believe? Unfortunately, yes. So why would you want to drive a car like this? Simple. Fuel economy. Now, in the Jetta Hybrid, I got 48 miles per gallon, which really impressed me and is actually better than their claim numbers. In this car, however, I got 62 miles per gallon. Toyota has a claimed zero to 60 mile per hour time of 9.8 seconds for this car. Now, that is an outrageously bad, but it's certainly not fast either. And more to the point, it feels slower than that in day-to-day -day driving. Yeah, it'll do that when you've got your foot all the way to the floor, but every day it just doesn't have the responsiveness or the torque that the turbocharged Jetta Hybrid has. I should of course point out that the Prius does have a power mode you can access by pushing the button on the dash and that does make a noticeable difference in making the car better to drive every day. And thankfully in the testing I've done, it's a very small fuel economy penalty for using that mode. Driving the Prius isn't all bad news either. It's nice and quiet and it's a smooth drive too. The Jetta on the other hand, you really feel the sort of low RPM rumble from its uh, turbocharged hybrid engine and it feels a lot like the diesels that Volkswagen so well known for and that's really not a good thing. Even the brakes on this thing are quite smooth, something that almost no other automaker has been able to master. Uh, on the Jetta Hybrid for instance, you feel that every time you touch the brake pedal you get a different level of response and sometimes it feels like there's no brake there at all. The Jetta Hybrid is a better car in almost every conceivable way compared to the Prius. Unfortunately, it's a worse hybrid, which when you're shopping for a car like this is what really matters. If you want a vehicle that's fun and efficient, get the Jetta, but not the hybrid. You want the TDI. And if you want the best hybrid with the best fuel economy, even after four years on sale, your best bet is still the Toyota Prius. For more on this car comparison and others like it, visit autoguide.com.